What's up, nerds? Welcome back. Thank you so much for being here again. As always, my name is Nate in the Wild. It is fantastic to see you. So listen, a while back, I recorded a day-to-night time-lapse tutorial. Uh, it was fairly straightforward. It was just like sunset through city lights coming on. A lot of people liked it. It was pretty well received. And I promised you that I would do a follow-up time-lapse tutorial for Holy Grail time-lapses. Holy Grails are kind of the big daddy of time-lapses, if the name wasn't a hint. That's uh, sunlight. Like, the sun is still up all the way through the Milky Way full-blown astrophotography. They're very difficult, they're very complicated. I promised you that I would do a follow-up tutorial, and that was two years ago. I'm sorry about that. In my hubris, nay, arrogance, I thought that it would be right around the corner. Unfortunately, life got busy. YouTube is not my full-time source of income. In fact, I would say it's not really even a source of income. I just kind of do this for fun. So I apologize for that, life got busy, but I see a clearing on the horizon, uh, good weather, new moon, I don't have anything else to do, so we're gonna go out and we're gonna make this happen. There's a couple things I wanna talk about first here in the studio before we head out into the woods to start shooting, so let's dive into those. The first thing is the duration of it. A standard time lapse can be done in 30 minutes. You know, you just go out near sunset, you get some moving clouds, you get some changing lighting conditions, or some people walking, whatever you're into. Uh, half an hour, maybe an hour if you're feeling rambunctious, and you're done. A holy grail time lapse is so much more than that. Uh, the name itself is intimidating. It's considered the holy grail because it's the hardest of all time lapses. It's the most complicated thing you can do with a camera, really. You're starting in broad daylight with the sun shining and you're going all the way through sunset, blue hour to the Milky Way coming out. There's a lot that has to happen. It's gonna take five hours. I like to get there an hour before sunset and I don't just mean arrive an hour before. I mean, tripod is set up settings are all locked in and the shutter is pushed. I want the time-lapse running one hour before sunset and I leave it running for one full hour after the official start of nighttime. And so I don't just mean one hour after sunset. You have sunset and then 30 to 45 minutes is civilian twilight. Then you have nautical twilight, then astronomical twilight, and then nighttime starts. So all in all, we're talking five full hours of the time-lapse running. So, Plan appropriately, budget a sufficient amount of time. This is not something you can just kind of bang out for funsies uh, after work one day. It's gonna take a decent amount of commitment. On that note, then we have to talk about storage space. Uh, it will be minimum probably 600 photos if you let it run that long. On my camera, the Sony A1, 600 photos is going to be about 50 gigabytes or so. Um, in this day and age, storage space isn't really as much of a concern. You can get a terabyte SD card on Amazon delivered in like two hours. So just put a big card in there and you're gonna be fine. That's not one of the things to stress about. For battery power, that's the number one question I get for Holy Grail time lapses. People can't believe I run a time lapse for seven hours straight on a single battery. And the answer is that obviously I don't. I have kind of a special little setup. It's not expensive or complicated. It's just what I like to do, but I'll show you that in the field so you can actually see it and how I use it. Now, after we're done shooting the time lapse, I'm gonna record a separate video for the post-processing. I promise that's not going to take me two years to complete. I'm probably gonna record that video like the day I come home from shooting the actual time lapse. But as you know, the editing process is where magic is really made in photography. Uh, the shooting is just half of it. The post-processing, the editing is where you really bring that image to life. I'm gonna make that a separate video, so stay tuned for that. I think that's all I've got for here in the studio. Let's get out, let's go get some fresh air, go on a little hike in the mountains and shoot a holy grail time lapse. Okay, here we are hiking into Ruth Lake in the Uinta Mountains of Northern Utah. I'm a little winded, I haven't hiked in, I don't know, a month or so. I've been rehabbing a spine injury, believe it or not, but you can tell I love you guys because I have three full frame cameras, three tripods, batteries, audio equipment. We're dedicated to getting this done. I'm gonna learn you some stuff today. This isn't uh, an accident that I'm going to this lake. This is very premeditated. I, uh, I looked at this on photo pills. I planned this out. It's important to note that in the Northern Hemisphere, the Milky Way will always be pretty much between South and West. And it varies a little bit depending on the time of year and the time of day you're shooting. Tonight's gonna be right after sunset when we see it. This is very intentional plan ahead and uh, you know you can't see any stars right now so you pretty much have no choice you're not going to know where the milky way is until it's too late so for a time lapse like this preparation is absolutely key so 
one of the most common questions I get about time lapses is the battery life. And I do know for a fact that the A1 can run an entire Holy Grail time lapse, about four hours of shooting on a single battery, but it does cut pretty close. It's uh, a little too close for comfort. So what I've started doing now, I have this dummy battery from Alvin's Cables. It's just literally an empty battery with a USB-C cable coming out of it. Here, let me get a little closer so you can see it. Um, it's just a fake battery with a cable. And then I plug it into this anchor power bank. It's, uh, this one is 10,000 milliamp hours. So it's just about eight full Sony batteries. And when I plug that into the bottom of the camera, I have 12 hours of shooting. I don't have to worry about running out of battery in the middle of the time lapse. I just take the other battery out, plug that guy in, and then I just hang this uh, anywhere on my tripod, somewhere stable where I know that it's not going to be swinging around in the wind. And then I have power for the entire night. So uh, hopefully by now you've watched my intro to time lapses video. I'm not going to go over the very basics of time lapses in this. This is pretty advanced out here, but uh, just to quickly reiterate, we're going to shoot this in full manual. So I have it in manual focus, manual white balance, manual exposure, everything. Um, I just like to double check that because there's nothing worse than starting your time lapse and realizing it's on autofocus. I'm going to quickly focus on um, the background. I just choose the farthest away point, usually a mountain or something. For the white balance, I'm going to set it at about 4,500. It's a weird middle ground. It's gonna be too blue for sunset and too warm for astro, but we're shooting pure uncompressed raw so we can change all of this later in the editing room. Uh, it's just kind of a nice middle ground to give us enough latitude to edit in both directions. Once you get your composition, also, I like to double check that every single knob on the tripod is tightened. Uh, I've definitely shot time lapses and had the tripod just sort of slowly drift to the side because I forgot like this tiny little knob down here. You don't think about it because you don't use it very often, but maybe it got loosened up while you were hiking in or something. That's a huge disaster. Okay, so let's talk about the single most contentious part of Holy Girl time lapses is the exposure ramping. That's the hardest part. That's what scares everybody off, right? That's probably why you're watching this instead of just going out and trying one. How do you go from broad daylight, the sun shining, all the way to a full astro photo smoothly? Honestly, auto exposure will get you close. It'll get you 90% of the way, but it won't get you 100% of the way. There's this last little bit of astronomical twilight that just is a little bit too weird for the camera to fully calculate. Sometimes you might get lucky and it'll work, but I've had it blow exposures, just go maximum like 10,000 ISO, 30 second exposure, basically a white frame. Um, you can set limits to those, like you can set it to a maximum of 4,000 ISO, maximum of a 15 second exposure, for example, but if it does it too early, you're still way overexposed, potentially unrecoverably. Um, also, what would be the fun of this video if I just came out here and I was like, then set your camera to aperture priority and hit record. You don't need a video for that, just do it, right? So tonight we're gonna do this the hardest possible way. I'm going to shoot this fully manual. I am going to physically change the exposure with my thumbs every single time it needs to happen. I'm gonna walk you through each one of those changes as they happen and I'm gonna to explain to you why I'm doing those exposure changes and when. Uh, and so hopefully when you go to shoot one of these, you'll actually have a little bit of a handle on it. But the important thing to start with is just having a good handle on exposures in general. You shouldn't be like brand new to photography. You should be able to look at a scene where I'm at right now and think to yourself, wow, this is probably like you know, at f1.8 ISO 100, like a one over 2000 uh, shutter exposure, you should just be able to like kind of know that off the top of your head. Getting into blue hour, you should just know like, oh, I probably am going to be around one over 100, one over 50, one over 25 as it starts to get darker. So you're not like metaphorically and literally shooting in the dark. You kind of have a baseline framework for how bright the exposure should be as the time lapse progresses. And the most important thing is to know your end goal. We're going daylight into night for this one. So I know that my ending exposure is going to be about 3200 ISO f1.8 and uh, 13 second exposure. I'll probably do a 15 second exposure tonight because uh, with the time lapse, I like to have a little extra motion blur in the stars. Um, but I, I know that. I know that that's my target. And so I know 
uh, off the top of my head, 10 minutes before the end of astronomical twilight, it will be dark enough where I can hit my astro exposure and I have that framework moving forward. So start to internalize those a little bit as you go out before you shoot your first Milky Way time lapse. So the easiest way to work with this is to actually use your camera's metering at least to get started. So right now I have it at just a blank 0.0. .0. The sun is still up, the exposure is not changing, so I can talk to you. I don't really have to think about this that much. As it gets darker, I'm going to slow the shutter speed down. So right now it's 1 over 2000 f1.8 ISO 100. As it gets darker, I'm going to slow the shutter speed down. I want to keep my ISO as close to 100 as possible. Um, it's the last thing I'm going to raise. I'm going to walk my shutter speed almost all the way out to my astro speeds before I start increasing my ISO because I don't want the high ISO noise any sooner than possible. The long exposure noise is much less, at least on this camera, than high ISO noise. And so I'm going to ramp my exposure with my shutter speed first and then my ISO. And I never change aperture, by the way, because that will give you a change in vignette and that's literally impossible to edit out unless you are exceptionally advanced. Uh, and it's also just like an insane amount of work because you'll have to change it in like 400 photos. So never change your aperture under any circumstances. Shutter speed first, then ISO. All right, so we have about 40 minutes until sunset, so I figured might as well chat. I wanna talk through the settings for this time-lapse. That's another one of the like number one questions I'm sure you have. So first things first, I got out here an hour before sunset. Uh, the number one way that I have ruined Holy Grail time-lapses is by not running them long enough, either starting right before sunset or ending them right as the stars are visible. Um, it's super easy after you've been sitting out here for three or four hours to be like, oh look, I got the Milky Way, I'm done. And then you go home. Um, but then it's like such a tease because you wait through sunset, you wait through blue hour, and then right as the Milky Way comes out, the time lapse is over. Don't do that. At least an hour on either end. Nighttime officially starts at 10.20 p.m. tonight. I'm gonna just let this run until midnight. That's an hour and a half after official start of night. So this is a 20 second interval from the start of one photo to the start of the next photo is 20 seconds, which means I'm taking three photos per minute, which will be uh, 180 per hour. So if you're doing 30 frames per second for your final video, that's six seconds of video per hour of shooting. So that gives us enough leeway. I have six seconds of the sun setting. I'm gonna have another like six to eight seconds of blue hour. And then I'm gonna have probably 10 to 15 seconds of the stars coming out in the Milky Way moving. And that's perfect. I can either speed ramp that or I can just let the whole thing play as like a 25, 30 second video. But I like to shoot these longer and then speed them up if I want because a short time lapse uh, is not fun for anybody. I've said this a thousand times. If you watch my channel, I'm sure you know this by now, but I'm gonna shoot this longer than it needs to be and speed it up later. So one hour before, one hour after. Um, so speaking of preparedness, I also wrote a note down. Um, I don't think you can probably see it out here in the daylight, but I'll just put this on the screen so you can see it. But I wrote down the start of every milestone for tonight. I have sunset is at 8.32 p.m. Civil twilight starts at 8.32, ends at 9.03. Nautical twilight ends at 9.40. Astronomical twilight goes from 9.40 to 10.19. Nighttime starts at 10.20 p.m. So I'm just prepared. I know the stages. That's the sort of like planning ahead that gets you success. Okay, so as an example, you can see that the sun has moved off of that mountain and it's starting to get into the shade. I'm starting to get eaten alive by mosquitoes, which is super fun. I'm gonna go make my first exposure adjustment. Here, come over with me. I'll show you what I'm doing. There's no universe where this is actually gonna look very good on this camera. <clears throat> but, you can see down here how that says negative 0.7. I want to try and keep that as close to zero as I possibly can. So I'm going to lift my shutter speed. I went from 1 over 2000 to 1 over 1250. That's going to change. Now it says zero. That's where we want to keep it. Okay, 8, 11 p.m., so about 20, 25 minutes from sunset. It's darkening up again. I'm at negative 0.7. That's about how far I let it go is like negative 0.7 to negative one stop of exposure. I'm going to change it. Remember we're at one over 1250 for my shutter. I'm gonna to go to one over 800. So just two clicks on my shutter wheel. Your camera might be a little bit different, but I usually just go 
two, maybe three clicks if I'm a little bit behind. Sometimes I'll look and it's like negative 1.3, but that's about how far I go. And it was perfect, nailed it. It says 0.0, .0 on the exposure. Now I can just hang out and wait. This part's pretty slow. It's gonna be 15, 20 minutes before, or between exposures, but once the sun is officially down, blue hour twilight starts to move pretty quick and that's where you're gonna really have to pay attention. This is just a quick interlude to say that I love this. Look how beautiful it is out here. I can't believe I get to do this for work. This is my job. Thank you all for watching. I wouldn't get to do this for a living if it wasn't for you. Look at how cute this is out here. There's fish jumping like crazy. It's a beautiful sunset. We've got a reflection. I couldn't be happier. All right, the sun is not officially down. As far as my frame goes, there's no more sun in it though. So it's starting to look significantly darker. So um, it went down to negative 1.0. That's totally fine. It's very easy to fix once we edit it, which you'll see in the next video. So I'm gonna take it from one over 800 now to one over 400, basically doubling the amount of light that we're getting. Uh, now it says negative 0.3. That's close enough for me. I'm gonna, I mean, none of these have to be exactly what I'm telling you to do. Uh, it is 823, just in case you are following along though. So remember sunset is at 832. So we're about nine minutes before sunset. Um, but yeah, that took us from negative 1.0 to negative 0.3. I'm gonna let that run for probably another 15 or 20 shots before I make my next adjustment. Okay, as of one minute ago, it is officially sunset. I made my final daytime adjustment. Uh, I'm at one over 160 second on my shutter. Still f1.8, still ISO 100, just like we talked about. 842, exactly 10 minutes after sunset, one sixtieth of a second, one over 60. Now, something that might go without saying, but I do want to mention it. Um, you see me in this video touching, I'm adjusting the screen, I'm adjusting the knobs. It probably looks like I'm manhandling my camera, but I promise you I am being ridiculously delicate with it. Uh, I think it goes without saying, but I do want to just mention it just on the off chance that uh, some of you are wondering how I'm so cavalier with it. Uh, it looks like I'm grabbing my camera when I do this, but I'm actually barely touching it. And I actually have this other finger here to compensate for the pressure of moving that dial. It's a really like weirdly practiced motion. It kind of looks like I'm just grabbing my camera, but I promise you I'm not shaking it. It's one of the number one things to be careful of with time lapses. Any camera motion can completely ruin it. And um, especially adjusting in the dark, you need to know exactly where your dials are at all times. Okay, 8.52, it is exactly 20 minutes after sunset and exactly 10 minutes before the end of civil twilight and the start of nautical twilight. Seemed like a good time for an update. Um, I just adjusted the exposure to 1 15th of a second. I have my hood up now because there's like 10,000 mosquitoes out here and it's absolutely killing me. I hope I don't look too ridiculous. Um, something I wanted to mention right now is the weird moment in blue hour. I'm on the a7S III with a very fast lens, so it probably doesn't look like blue hour, but it's starting to be pretty dark out here to the point where I'm going to need a headlamp soon if I have to actually like, do anything important. Um, but I wanted to mention I'm no longer aiming for zero on my exposure meter. Now I'm actually letting it drift down to negative 0.3, negative 0.7 and stay there. And that's because this is a weird time of night where it's dark on the eastern side of the frame and very bright on the western side of the frame where the sun went down. And if you try to keep it at zero, you end up with this like neon blob that's impossible to edit out. And so I like to keep it a little bit underexposed because then I can bring those highlights down and keep that part of the sky looking good uh, and then raise the shadows to recover the dark part of the frame. If you expose it bright, you're gonna end up with an unrecoverable white section in the sky that just doesn't look that good. So as you enter the end of Civil Twilight, this is the TLDR for you, the too long, didn't listen. As you approach the end of Civil Twilight and the beginning of Nautical Twilight, you're gonna to wanna to let your exposure drift down a little bit closer to negative 0.7 so that you can recover the highlights in the bright part of the sky and lift the shadows in the dark part. It just gives you a more even, more manageable exposure when you go to edit. Oh yeah, and this also has the added benefit of just looking more realistic. If you try to keep your nighttime exposures the exact same brightness as your daytime exposures, it looks weird to people's brains because we just know that that's not how nighttime looks. So I actually do want it to get darker as the sun sets. It makes it feel more natural. Then when the stars come out, it's a little bit more magnificent. And you'll see that uh, when we edit. Hey, 902 
p.m. Civil Twilight is over. We are officially into nautical twilight. It still probably looks pretty bright on this camera, but we are at 25,000 ISO on the video camera, so it is much darker out here <laughs> than it looks uh, on what you're seeing. Um, over here, I'm adjusting the exposure. We're officially out of fractions on this camera. It's now 0 0.4 seconds, so just shy of a half second exposure. It's getting dark. This is the time of night when it's really rapid changes. I'm probably going to be adjusting this every like two minutes as we go now. We're going to start ramping pretty quick here. This is the worst part of the time lapse is there's some hikers coming with their headlamps on and I'm a little bit worried that it's going to ruin my time lapse. Hi. Hey, would you guys mind not pointing your headlamps? I mean, I'm doing a time lapse. Thank you. Uh, it is 9.20. We are halfway between Civil Twilight and Astronomical Twilight. Astronomical Twilight starts at 9.40. Civil ended at 9.02. Uh, I'm at a five second exposure, so the light is changing so fast. The notes I've been writing down um, says that at 9.02, we we're at a half second exposure at 9.10. It was a one second exposure. And now, just 10 minutes later, we're at a five second exposure. So we've needed five times more light in just the last 10 minutes. To give you an idea, I told you that this was the moment in nautical twilight when the light changes extremely fast. It's the end of blue hour, but not quite night. That's when you really have to pay attention because it's crazy how fast it's changing. I changed it to five seconds when I started talking and it already needs to go to six seconds. So yeah, we're moving fast, but we're getting there. Okay, so it is 9.26. I wasn't gonna do an update until 9.30, uh, but I just hit 15 second exposure, which is the length of my astro exposure. It's only a 20 second interval, so that's only five seconds between images. I don't wanna go much longer than that, or there won't be any time for me to actually make adjustments between them. So what that means is that I am going to now start adjusting my ISO. So I'm at a 15 second exposure, ISO 100. All the adjustments from here on out are going to be ISO related. And then I'm going to slowly work my way up to ISO either 3200 or 4000. We're gonna see how it looks. And then once we get to that point, we're done making exposure adjustments and we can just sit back and relax and let the astro portion of the time lapse roll freely. Okay, it is 940, it is officially the start of astronomical twilight. Civil twilight's done, nautical twilight's done. I just checked an exposure. We're starting to get a peek at the Milky Way, just a little bit of it in the exposures, which is really cool. Uh, I'm at ISO 1250 and a 15 second exposure. My goal is 3200 ISO, so we're about halfway done. Honestly, we're just kind of hanging out now. Nautical twilight's where the exposures are, uh, changes are really fast. This is much slower and more relaxed. I'm starting to feel better, starting to just kind of chill. Um, I couldn't ask for better conditions. Uh, our last exposure adjustment of the night is targeted to be 1010 because nighttime officially starts at 1020. Um, in my experience, about 10 minutes before the end of astronomical twilight is the last exposure adjustment you have to make. So I have about 30 minutes to make a couple slow exposure adjustments as it continues to get darker. Please focus. There we go. Um, you might notice me being a little bit more whispery for the rest of this video. It is nighttime. There's a family camping on the other side of the lake, so I don't want to be rude and wake them up, so I'm going to be a little bit quieter for the rest of this. Um, they do have some headlamps going. I guess we're going to find out if that kind of ruins the time lapse or makes it look really cool, but, you know, nature's for everybody, so I'm kind of glad that they brought their kids out here to enjoy this beautiful mountain lake. Honestly, sometimes headlamps can be really cool. Okay, it is uh, 10.05. It's a little bit earlier than the 10.10 that I told you, but I just made my last exposure adjustment. So we are at a 15 second exposure, ISO 3200, full astro settings. I do not have to touch it again. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna let this run until midnight. So I've got about two hours of shooting left here. Um, it's, you know, it's a while. I'm gonna just hang out. I'm gonna kick back, have some snacks, and sort of chill a little bit. Um, everything's looking great. There's a tiny bit of a lightning storm uh, on the ridge, on the other side of the mountain behind me. I'm hoping that doesn't blow out any of my exposures. They're very faint little bursts of light, but I can still see them. But 
Otherwise, this is looking incredible. There's not a breath of wind, so it's just like perfect reflection. It is an astrophotographer's dream. I am so excited to get home and edit this. Okay, so I jinxed myself right after I said we had perfectly calm waters. A uh, bunch of wind came in. You'll see in the finish time lapse, there's no reflection anymore. Um, the lightning over the mountain is getting more intense and I'm starting to see some clouds. So that combined with the wind tells me that it might be time to pack up and start heading back towards the car. I'm at about a little over 10,000 feet in elevation. I have about a mile walk back. I don't think I want to be out here if a thunderstorm rolls over uh, in the middle of the night. So uh, it is 11.30 right now. So I'm only like half an hour shy of my midnight goal. It's a full hour after sunset. So I think we're good to go. I'm going to pack it up and head home. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. And stay tuned for the second half of this video series where I walk you through the edit. That should be coming up in about a week. Thanks for going on this little hike with me. And I'll see you next time.